Campbell and I are launching and hosting an eight day water fast um, off the back of our fast to give you guys a chance to fast in a way that's supportive and you're not doing it by yourself. So it's happening in October. The link is underneath here. Just click through. Um, it's it's There's no cost. It's by donation. Just pay whatever you feel it's worth. Campbell and I are committing to turning up in the morning and in the evening for every for eight days where we will launch a Zoom, have a Zoom podcast with anyone who wants to come on. And if you've got any fears or stresses or worries or something weird's happening or you're losing your motivation or whatever it is, we'll be there as a community to be like, we can do this team. Day one is done. Everyone go to sleep quickly and it'll be day two, you know, like, you know, you know just sleep, that, sleep your whole way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, if, you know, go to bed if you're feeling like you're giving up and go to bed and sleep and it'll be day three, you know, like, but we'll be there to hold your hand and to like, you know, get you through it. Yeah, man. Yeah. And thanks to everyone who's already gone and signed up. Um, yeah. We've got quite a few there um, and we haven't even really promoted it. So that's awesome. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it, it would be a hard go, I think, doing it by yourself, especially if you're in, in the burbs or something like that, where you've got yep. other people in your space. So yep. you know, if you want to do it, then this is this will be a, a big help. You know, every morning, every evening, get motivation, get to talk to other people. You know, you can have a, a bitch about how, how <laughs> it sucks. Um, but just that support, like, will, will help, you know, immensely, I think, to get through, get people through. And what are we 100%. doing for eight days? Is that we're going eight to days. Go yeah. Oh, very casual. Good morning to Tartaria, Australia, and Autodidactic. Hey, buddy. How you going? Yeah, man. It's like <laughs> 7 a.m. here, early morning recordings. Yep. Uh, yes. So we've got cats behind us, but we're not sure what we're going to talk about. We'll just, <laughs> we'll just talk no. about... <laughs> Um, can you even say his name, Mr. Puff Daddy, <laughs> P. Diddy, Diddy, yeah. Hitler Man, Sean Yeah, Holmes. I know. There's this, um, I haven't been tuned into that recently, but, you know, we moved last week and my mind's a bit scattered. So I was just like looking at what's been posted around the last couple of weeks. And, yeah, I was uh, like an overwhelming amount on the arrest of um Diddy and, and all the celebrities. And actually, it was weird, Campbell, because I saw this whole, like, chain of posts that were really similar to when um, COVID started and all the celebrities were doing those cryptic, like, memes and images and statements to each other. You know, Ellen DeGeneres, she had a, like, her, that thing from... Wilson, she had the Wilson shirt on yeah, from... That's right. yeah, yeah. And then, then there was these cryptic, like, they were talking to each other about, you know at rest but then nothing fucking happened and they're all just what you nothing happened i mean ellen lost the show oprah lost the show but nothing nothing significant none, happened yeah none of them went to jail you know and we're still waiting for the the island list gotta be careful what we say right yeah <laughs> exactly like where's that what happened to that what happened to all of that nothing's mm. happened to any of that that we um that's become like public knowledge i guess Mm. So, what do you think now? Are we are we is this something happening, or is this this sort of the same sort of situation? And why is it happening? And what does it all mean? I, I think, yeah, man. I think this is all part of what we're going through, whatever you want to call it. You know, the Great Awakening. Um, my my point of view is all this all this stuff's always been going on, right? We're just being shown it, and and so I think obviously the system, right? Who who puts these people up there, that's also the same system that is the law system, right? So that's why we haven't been seeing anyone go to jail because it's the same group of people, right? The law uh, system and the Lord system. The law. It's all the same. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think we're dealing with, you know, I don't think there's just bad out there, right? I think there's good out there too. And, Clearly, we're, we're moving forward is what it looks like. You know, they, they can resist as much as they want, but there's still stuff coming out and there's bigger and bigger names being tied to all this. I saw a um, video and they were tying um, Obama. <laughs> I'm worried about the words yeah. I'm saying here, right? But um, Obama, and, and obviously we know all the, the, the um, rumours about him being gay right and and that and this is what's coming out about all diddy and all his mates is that they're all gay right but they're putting up these these big fronts <laughs> as being these big 
masculine men. It's very strange. Um, but I mean, even just the hip hop, when you look into hip hop, the whole thing of having their, you know, they wear their jeans halfway down their legs. Uh, that yeah, their ass is showing. That's yep. straight from jail saying, I'm up for it, basically. Yep. And and then the jail culture with all the tats and all this kind of stuff, it's really, so like hip hop has really, really affected obviously more the black community in America, but it's it's very, very um, low morals, right? I mean, look at the, yep. the girls now in rap who are singing. I mean, if you listen to the lyrics, holy crap, man. It's yep. just like... I'm, yep. I'm, a, I'm a gangbang girl, right? I mean, that's pretty much it. And that's what they're influencing the young, younger generation with. And now, I mean, it did, didn't take much to work out, right? This is actually what these people are doing in the background, right? Yeah. So, like, I mean, it was it's an interesting one, Cam, because, <clears throat> you know, when we talk about all this stuff here on this channel, we're essentially looking at the idea that, like, everything that operates on the surface of this earth is in some sort of parasitic pyramid structure and that, you know, that we are the most slave but the most free and everything above us is um, compromised morally, financially, virtually every other way. Um, but then, like, you know, you've got this all this commotion now about arresting these celebrities and exposing them. So what's doing that? What energy, what exactly. group yeah. is that coming? Because it, it's like, would the system arrest itself? Would the parasitic structure, like, collapse into itself? It seems weird. Now we know how it all sort of works, that the law or the police or the politicians would be the ones arresting and exposing this. Like, what? there has to be another... To expose the celebrities and arrest them, they, it must be a uh, misdirection and cover for something bigger, you know? It feels like they're just throwing their pawns out front. Like it doesn't feel like some, I don't know, I'm just saying, is it doesn't feel like some good energy is coming in there and making all these changes or is it just like casting out the pawns to get away with something even worse? You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and they do that all the time, right? Um, they throw people under the bus to save themselves. But I think, I mean, just looking at it over like the four year period of what's been going on, like when I look at it, it seems that they've got all these plans and all these things they're pushing out, but none of it seems to be working. Like everything seems to be backfiring on them since 2020, right? When they brought in, in all the, the stuff. Um, there was such a massive kickback and, and that's just grown and grown and grown, right? So I, I think, I mean, what do I, I mean, ultimately, I guess I think we're reaching the top of the sine wave, right? We're about, to, we're, we're hitting a shift where the frequency is changing and that's, and that's the main reason why all this stuff is being exposed is we're seeing it. Like I said before, it's, all, it's always been there, but now it's like it's just, because our frequency is rising, they're becoming more exposed. Well, know. I mean, that makes sense. Like, that's if, the apocalypse, you know, right? Lifting the, yeah. lifting the veil or, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, that's a good way to look at it. So it's not so much that there's, like, people behind this, like as in, like, some, you know, white caped saviours, like, working in the scenes and doing all these spectacular moves to bring down the system. I don't think that's true. I think, like, there's no Jedi Knights there, like, having a secret battle with the, you know, with the fucking Darth Vader's army. But what I think may be happening, on the other hand, is that because our consciousness has expo become aware of it and more and more aware of it and people post more and more shit online about it and it just becomes ingrained in cultural consciousness and even the people who don't believe in any of it, like my 13-year-old, um, <laughs> don't believe in any of it, then um, it's still around them. They can't help it. There's still enough people in their lives that are mentioning it, that that consciousness is the thing behind the collapsing mm. process. I don't believe there's some good white people, like white caped heroes making calls. I think it's the consciousness that's shifting the reality. And, like, let's not forget that we have been under a program that like arresting a celebrity is like a fucking biggest fucking deal in the world. Like when actual fact, those celebrities are probably considered um, like scum 
by their lords. Like they're considered enslaved servants. They're not considered these glamorous, you know, highly functioning, um, masterful talents. They're not like that. They're literal, they're, they're pawns that will be used, abused and discarded by their their overseers at any second. It's not like it's the biggest fucking deal that a celebrity gets arrested. Like that's an illusion that we've got playing on, going on. You know, oh, my God, it's a celebrity. It's P. Diddy. It's Bieber. You know, like what? Like these are just, these aren't even talented, masterful human beings. They're, 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 they're pawns, right? They're actors. They're put up there to do a job. Immoral, and, broken, mm. moral coded. Oh, totally. And that's why things like what what's coming out about Bieber happens, right? Because they can't be, you know, lifted to that sort of you know, level of fame or whatever without being completely controlled and, and without the controllers, you know, their masters knowing how they're going to act and react and all this kind of stuff. And, and it's also exactly. got a lot to do with MK Ultra, right? And mind control when they put them through all these, these you know, rituals, if you want to call it that. But I mean, yeah, I, I think it's pretty obvious that the 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 evil, the bad in this world is pretty organized, right? But that doesn't mean that that, that high functioning. There's so yeah, exactly. There's so much fighting and all this kind of stuff within them that they're yep. all trying to take each other down all the time anyway. Yep. And I think that's yep. just gonna grow and grow. And yeah, I mean, I don't I've seen no evidence of any white hat movement or of any you know, sort of underground, good sort of physical group of people doing anything. I mean, that may be happening. I don't know. But I think it's more the energy is changing. I think it's it's us. I agree. It's us, mm. we the people that are going to be the white hats, you know, if you want to put it that way. Because you can't, you, if, if our equation that um, consciousness is created by us, if, if energy and consciousness creates a state of reality, if that's our fundamental belief of how all of this exists, then everyone's consciousness right now is shifting and changing reality. Yes. And oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yes. so we have to go with that theory and that there's oh, not any true. white. And like even the notion of the white hats or the white caped heroes, that's part of the programming. That's the programming that there's always, you know, this like savior energetic yeah. there yeah. to like working behind the Scenes. Well, when in actual fact it's our consciousness that's like morphing and shifting and changing mm. the reality. I mean, I for one will be super, um, you know, glad that this um, expose and arrested process of our God celebrities is done because like I get sick and tired of listening to our young one <laughs> like fucking idolise these stupid, immoral, eval you know, disgusting, corrupted, no longer whole human beings, probably invaded, parasitic, mm. like enslaved, whatever. Um, and I hate watching the idolization that goes on. And I just think, wow, I can't believe that still goes on. But it does, it's, of course it does. Like they're really idolized, these celebrities, as if it's something mm. to strive for. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, Taylor's been... Mention if there's stuff coming out about Taylor too, man. She's gonna fall. That they're all gonna fall, <laughs> man. Like that's what I see. Like that. That's what it's leading to. That's. But like you said, it's it's a collective consciousness, right? That's that's how we create reality. Is it's the thoughts that most people are thinking most of the time creates the reality. And so, before 2020, most people weren't thinking outside their job or just their routine and so nothing much changed yeah but as soon yeah as 2020 yeah 2020 came in and people started asking questions you know the whole you know conspiracy theory just and they just went off right and everyone yep. started waking up and that and that's a direct result i believe of people asking questions in their minds what's really going yep. on and so then we start to create that as a new world right yeah it's like when we were talking about how do we how do we create this new world? And you were saying we've got to dream it, right? We've got to mm. dream, have a new dream. And that's exactly what we're doing. The biggest right? dream wins. Yeah, yeah, the biggest dream wins, man. So that's, you know, after all the stuff came out, then people started saying, well, you know, these people have got to got to be exposed. They've got to go to jail. They've got to pay. And, that, and that, that's what's happening. 
I yeah. Think, yeah, so that's what I see is happening is it's, I know it still sounds very new agey in that, you know, but I think consciousness is rising and we're going somewhere better. And, and you know, it's interesting because back in 2020 with all the stuff and all the, the, the Trump stuff and that coming out, like the the overlying message was sit down and don't do anything. We've got it. The White Hats yeah. will you, which is the Dead same hurt. message as Jesus will save you or the whole, you know, concept that something outside of you yeah, is going to yeah, come yeah, and save yeah. you yeah. When, when what we need to do is understand yeah. we're here to, we're the ones, what's that saying? Um, we're the ones we've been waiting for. Yeah. And it, it's us. I mean, it's, it's, it's cool because it's not like, it's not like, um, humanity has an organized dream see this is the thing with the pyramid structures that we've been living in it's very organized like their whole process and their whole mm -hmm. step by step by step and um share this information don't share this rebuild this don't rebuild this recreate this educate it's so organized like organized in a way that only an ai would achieve like to me if you look at a pyramid structure that's chat gp3 like it's organized in a way that chat would write an essay, for example. It's just linear and structural like that. Like they have an organized dream mm. and it all like solidifies under potentially underground, like, you know, like it solidifies at a very distinctive, very set point. Not that we know, we don't know what that is, um, of course. But their dreaming is very organized and completely inorganic, completely inorganic. That's why as soon as you like step up from under the pyramid and join the next level, your world becomes inorganic. It becomes like controlled, synthetic. You are forced to integrate with other things like other biologies, other synthetics, other everything. And whereas us humans, we're organic and messy. <laughs> so we had a little moment of internet mishap there. Um, I think I was just going on a little like rant about the fact that we are not organized dreamers that yes. this whole pyramid structure is a very organized dream it's completely inorganic you know it is um essentially what would occur if chat gpt organized our society it's like linear and and there's no organic dreaming there is an end point there's a there's a singular point you know it's like looking at lord of the rings with um fucking Sauron there's like a there's a there's a clear like point of dream there what the plan is you know mm. whereas um <clears throat> and you can see it all the way through the pyramid structure like it all has the same end goal mm. but humanity we're messy we're messy organic creators it's not like we've got Mel Gibson from Braveheart fucking woo, go the <laughs> underdogs under the pyramid and all the bagpipes are playing and we've got our pa faces painted in white in blue stripes like nothing like that it's going to happen to humanity like uh, some organic lead is going to rise and um provide the way which is where the whole white hat saga the whole that whole thing just feels so inorganic to me like it felt really like the fact that it's even done through this Q drop through the in, the internet. It's just, it all felt, and it was all like future predictive, you know. Like they were bringing up drops. So it was basically it's like watching The Simpsons play out, but online. You know that's how Q yeah. drops felt to me. Um, so again, inorganic, but humanity still without. See, this is the pure potential that all this shit's always been hiding from us which is we don't actually have to do much about it apart from put our attention on something other than what they're... So, like, if the last four years exposing everything that's been exposed and just constantly looking at stuff and talking about stuff and, you know, all the memes and all the shit on socials and all the stuff on the videos and docu all that stuff has no no order to it. But it's all, like, leading towards the same thing. So that organic expose... Um, our consciousness has been on it, hasn't it? Like we've all been like fucking yeah, rooting for the destruction of the celebrities and politicians. Mm. The we've all been rooting for it. our consciousness has been on it with no plan whatsoever. Just that that's mm. where we want to go. Yeah, yeah, because we're creating. Yeah, that's like the the closed circuit. You know, the L. Um, they start with a goal in mind, right? And so that's why it's so structured. Everything's headed towards that goal and structure yeah. it's structured it as they they have been controlling 
the, the group think, right? Like with all their media and songs and education systems, it's all to structure yeah. our thoughts, right? And to yeah. close off the imagination. I That's know. why we say, you know, there's no real musicians anymore or artists or anything, right? So clever. But it, it is, but our, you know, and it, it's left brain, right? It's very structured left brain, which is very, um, what do they call it? Like uh, zero one coding. Yeah. Right? Um, binary, but we but our power is in the the right side, the, the creative side, and there is no end when you're creating, right? It's not like you're going towards a certain. I mean, sure, we all want yeah. a better world, and we There's say no you end. want that, but but it's not this specific, yep. you know, designated place. We're just all because creation agree. doesn't work like that. Creation yep, is I just totally, totally expansive. It just keeps yep. expanding. So. It's full yeah. potential in all in every minute. It's full potential. And yeah. that's why religion has to be part of this parasitic pyramid structure. Because with religions, you've got an end point. You know, yes. like the dreaming ends, most definitely that's... bang, the dreaming ends. Yeah, yeah, man. That's a good point, especially with Christianity, right? One life, yeah. and then you go to heaven, that's it. Bang, mm-hmm, bang. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and that's one of my biggest problems is well, what happens after that for eternity? Yeah, like just sit, sit at the right hand of God or something. I mean, it sounds a bit boring, right? And then, of course, like you, um, you don't even have to think about anything because it's already done. It's written for you. Here's the course. Here's the 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 end goal to pass, and yeah. that's it. The end. Literally, the end. Here's, here's, your, here's your list, right? Here's your yeah. ten commandments. Yep, <laughs> and that's one of my biggest gripes with religion. It stops. It stops the dreaming. And, yeah. and, and and that's across the whole board because as, as a Buddhist, I would a hundred thousand percent Buddhism stops the dreaming. Every single belief structure stops the dreaming. Even even us with you know like going down uh, rabbit holes and uh, looking at. I mean, we've all been through it over the last. I mean, most of us the last twenty years, but let's just take the last five years. You know, where like we over and over again have been caught up in some in a dead end dream. Like in a in a in a um, inorganic dream creation where you know there's the that full potential in all directions at all time it has a cutoff point and that's mm. where you know that's where you freaking know and that's why I think the uh, the internet um, this inorganic space which has in an inorganic way created and generated pure potential in all directions it, it like has. Yeah, it absolutely has which I believe Maybe. is space. Yeah. I think the internet is space. That's what space is. It, 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 it's totally like the Akashic records, right? Yep. Like it's just it's just a physical point that we can access it. But I mean, this is the thing. All technology, you know, when you look at computers, right? That they're, that they're like our brains. You know, you have like the the random access memory, which is your consciousness. You have the hard yeah. drive, which is your subconscious. You have all this stuff stored in there that you don't know is in there until you search for it like the whole setup of, of how it, it's set up and then going on to the internet is like the next step right that's like the interconnectedness so this is all this stuff we hear about of like telekinesis and telepathy and now we're connected right so it's yes it looks bad but i still maintain that all of this is for us right it's to open our eyes so you know, and people are like, well, why? I mean, what would life be if there was no challenges, if there was no bad side? What would we do? I mean, sure, you could have adventures, it'd be fun, but after a while you get bored, right? And then I think it needs to reset. And you can't be the hero of your story if there's no villain, right? If there's no dragon to slay. I, I kind of think that's what's going on here and, and all this stuff. Although, well... and, but the, and the next thing is if we look at it as bad, it, we create that, right? It becomes worse for us. So in the end, we, I think we always need to start from we're the creators. And it's like we were just saying where our focus goes is what we create. We're creating the future we walk into. And so this is why they're always trying to pull us back to, oh, my God, there's going to be another WAR. Oh, my God, look over here. Look at this. Look at what the, you know, and get us focusing on the bad stuff because, that's the structure they want. That's what they want us to think. I mean, look, I mean, I yes, I agree. Um, I think that's just like, I just think that that there's so many levels to it and layers, you know, like you could do your your greatest ability at focusing on everything you want or love or all those things. 
but you know at the, at the same time you're still do dealing with like say for example trauma or um or personality um wobbles or other people you know there's so many layers to this i mean I, for one, think this whole where we currently stand on this reality is pretty fucking exhausting because, like, we have the contextual knowledge. Like, what you just said to me was perfect contextual knowledge. Like, we've we've been taught that. but And we can apply that to a certain degree. But it's not like the implication of that is, you know, suddenly dramatically changes your life in a way that is beyond a shadow of a doubt like hmm. i don't know Campbell. I, mean, I just i just think that i don't know it doesn't excite me to hear those words anymore because i've just heard them to fucking death and here we still are well i mean you know? is, we need to move into doing right rather than, than, than but even that about it. we do it you and i do shit all the time mm. yeah we do and i mean this is the other thing is, you know, there's there's two worlds we live in, right? Like we've got our own little world and we can control the thoughts in that and, and control, you know, a lot of what happens to us. But then we have the, the group thing, right? The the whole everyone's thoughts combined and that creates the outer world. So that's why, you know, everything hasn't changed, right? Because most people are, are still projecting this world, right, of, of structure and of leaders and of, you know all this kind of stuff, and and they, you know, they still fight for it, man. Like especially, like I'm, I'm hanging, I'm staying with my parents at the moment, and and whoo, man, <laughs> holy crap! I haven't seen the news for I don't even know how long, like probably decades, and it's just on twenty four seven here. Yep, yep. Same with my, my parents, door, and yep. it's just all this fear, fear, and what about this, and what about well, that? what's happening? What's happening in the news, Campbell? I don't know. Tell us. Probably no one knows. <laughs> It's just all the same crap. There's, I mean, I don't know. They're talking about a WAR three. I don't even know. Oh, yeah. So that you know, is, is they're trying to push that in the Ukraine. Oh, and then there's all this stuff happening in Israel, and they're the very pro Israel message is being put out. You know, uh, and and again, because obviously there's been a big a big uproar and kickback about what's going on over there, and so now that the proper propaganda machines pumped in, but it's the same old. It's just the same old crap I Look, heard 20 years ago, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's bad, like people killing each other, people robbing, oh, my God, be scared. It's it's just, yeah. I mean, Campbell, it is, it is a bit of a paradox. I mean, we've talked about this heap. It's still a paradox because you can be completely aware and conscious of this level of information. You can completely, you know, they'll introduce the Ukrainian war and, you know, almost immediately on your channel will come through images of the president, like, you know, being naked, dancing on top of a piano, like straight away, you'll get the contradictory, like, this is actually the truth about this guy. Or, this is the truth about that guy. Or, yeah. This is, yeah. You know, you'll get the, the real story, the alternative story straight away. So, like, there's no one we know that, well, mostly, that is still plugged in to this presented reality. But, like, we're all, without, like, we're all still waiting for something to occur because it has to, something has to occur that is out of our, um, like, you know, we sit, it's frustrating because we sit here knowing all this information. And yet the the rest, and then and nothing happens, and we sit here knowing, and nothing happens, and we sit here watching all the and all the clone stuff, and all the transgendered stuff, and all the celebrities, and all the perversion and immoral, the the Satan, all the shit. Like it goes on. We're all really conscious of it. We're all really aware of it. It's being posted in the billions of content in on the internet, like billions of posts and tweets and memes and pictures and videos, are like all constantly, nonstop. And yet we we have to, and yet here we sit, Campbell, like it's going on, it's been exposed, and yet here we sit. So that's the frustration point because mm. humanity's collect, collective energetic may have got us this far, that we've exposed it to this far. But, you know, what happens after that is this is always feels like we're always just sitting around waiting. That's how it always feels. Like it doesn't feel like we can just go and fucking sort it out. And it's just like I'm. I, that's what I think is the hardest part of where we sit right now at this moment in time, because you know I could think of a million things that you know we could be doing that would be super excellent, like like exploring outer realms, and like mm. actually like 
exploring inner realms, like actually like having our, our brain cells back online properly so that we're like working with it to its full extent. There is literally a myriad of things that could be like just so insanely awesome to experience. But yet here we sit. <laughs> here we sit, Campbell. You know, we can have yeah. the greatest outlook about this whole thing, but here we sit and it's fucking infuriating and annoying. Yeah, I look, I, I hear, man, I get it. Um, but I mean, again, that's that's the problem, isn't it? Like, if everyone believed that, oh well, I can just get up and change reality, then, then it probably would change, right? Like, we're, we're learning this stuff, like, and the the reason for the brain fog is so that we could be controlled, right? But that's that's starting to lift too. Like, there's it, it, now everyone knows about well. I don't know about everyone, but everyone I know knows about the water and the food and what's going on and to get your own stuff and now detoxing yeah. and the parasites we've been talking about and all that. I mean, the thing is you've got to, like if we took everyone from the earth today and put them in a, an amazing world, what, like, what do you think would happen? Sorry, what? Sherlock's on top of me. Hello, oh, hello puppy. Oh, Sherlock Holmes, get down. Sherlock Holmes, hello, boy. Who um, had a parasitic tick bite this week, by the way, everyone, and we, almost died. Yes. The irony of what we've been talking about recently. But catastrophic. It's terrible. Dogastrophic, man. Yeah, dogastrophic. Dogastrophic. Catastrophic. Yeah, That's, back. There you go. Cats, back. right? Cats. Oh, look. See, this is why I go down these tangents, like <laughs> get obsessed about cats in the history of the world. Because why not? Because at this point, like just... Watching what's playing out in real time is extremely slow. It's extreme. <laughs> it's like repeating you one over and over and over okay. and over again. But, uh, yeah. I mean, that breeds creativity, doesn't it? Boredom. Like when you get, you're like, well, how do I change this? And when we come up with ideas. But like I was saying before, I, th I think we all need to, if we put everyone from the earth now in a new earth, it, like what would happen with everyone, the way that people think, like the majority, it, it'd just end up like this again, right? Because this is what they'd create. So like this whole new earth yeah, because, yeah. is all on different. We have to change ourselves, right? Back to the whole we've got to dream a, a bigger dream, a better dream, and then it'll come into fruition. You know, we're not, most people aren't ready now. Because, like, we're still programmed by the guru mentality. It's Completely. still there. Like, I mean, on you know, like, <laughs> online, like, there's just, if there's you've got a channel. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you're you one of those gurus. <laughs> Don't follow me. No, uh, it, yeah, no, but, no. like, I, I, that's why we're all, like, you know, just, like, let's gather as a community, like don't worry about anything we're saying like but it's true like we we're constantly still in that mentality of guru guru worshiping or, or someone knows more it, than us but it's, it's a strange one man i battle that all the time like should i like why am i speaking like like you know exactly right like but i mean i think you know it depends what you're doing right like you have these gurus out there that tell people what to think and they're blah 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 where I, I just like to put stuff out and ask questions and because I don't think I have all the answers. I don't think anyone has all the answers, right? If they did, they they, they wouldn't be here. And well, it's fine. I mean, everyone has different talents in different areas. Exactly. And you'll go to the That's skill set that so serves cool. you. Mm, yeah. 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 And and the ones online, they're just, you know, they're good orators, they're good speakers, they're good to, at putting their thoughts into vo vocalising their thoughts. So that's a skill set that people mm. want to follow, you know. So, I mean, that makes sense. But, like, if we were to start from scratch again, then that mentality would continue on. But it would be equalised by the reverence for all skill sets and not just the reverence for the podium. That's the difference in our culture. We mm. have been programmed to have a reverence for anything or anyone that's on a podium speaking yeah. at us yeah. and like and oh. way less reverence for all the other skills that are required across the board to you know live in a beautiful harmonized society which there are infinite amount and every single human is part of one of those skill sets that should be honored and, and revered but it's just not the way we've ever experienced <laughs> ever completely man if everyone was left to do their own thing you know everyone's got their own talents it, it would all work perfectly right it's just like how how life works perfectly, right? Everyone's sort of integrated and people come up and give you information or help you when you need it. And, and that's part of their reality too. But, you know, it's somehow it gets merged so that everyone gets what they, they need and want out of it. And that's 
that's definitely how it should be and how it would work if we weren't put through education and told that we have to get jobs and all this stuff, right? Because, I mean, so many geniuses have been destroyed through yeah. school, right, and, and they don't get to create Yeah, it's a clever system. Out, you know? <laughs> yeah. So this yep. is the thing. But, I mean, it could all be, um, you know, the, what we're waiting for could be frequency, right, like, like we keep talking about is the frequency rise. And we've got yeah, this the shift. frequency yep. and all this kind of stuff. Have you seen this video? I'll show a video from our, our um, one of our faves, the fittest flat earther. Yeah, I like this guy. He's great. He does a lot of work on showing the the situation with celebrities yeah, playing like each other, right. like Sam Smith and Adele, the same person. And he yeah. did the whole thing on Trump and Elvis being the same person. Oh, Princess yeah. Diana and Melania Trump. Yep. I mean, it's crazy. And he just does it. But he also looks at the birthmarks and mole placements of moles and freckles and I it's fucking excellent. Them. Yeah, yeah. There's heaps of them. So come and check out. Yeah, fittest fat earth. And yeah, he's cool. fun, man. He is. He's cool. So let's check this out. In the world is happening off the coast of Anna Maria Island near the coast of Florida. Not only is there sonoluminescence happening, but check this out. There are literally waves in the patterns of squares. This is a person right there, and I've never seen anything like this. It is quite bizarre, and I don't think I agree with what the mainstream is saying. Because the mainstream simply says that square waves, also known as cross seas, are caused by the meeting of two sets of ocean waves from different weather systems. Well, maybe I would believe that if there weren't also crazy square patterns in the clouds in that same area, and also the sonoluminescence going on at the same time. But when you take a closer look, you realize that simple sound frequency can change the patterns of water, even to patterns that seem to have 90 degree square angles. And certain frequencies just happen to look exactly like those clouds and waves. And when you see that certain frequencies can cause certain patterns, and certain frequencies look just like those water patterns at Anna Maria Island, and you also see that certain frequencies can generate light. So maybe what's going on at Anna Maria Island isn't what they're telling us. Maybe they're throwing some frequencies out into the atmosphere. Frequencies that are causing water to respond a certain way, frequencies that are causing clouds to respond a certain way, and maybe even frequencies to make people act in different ways because frequencies can have psychological and emotional effects. So next time you hear about the sun luminescence or square waves in your area, ask yourself, is what they're telling us really what's going on or something else? And of course, this is all for entertainment purposes. I know that this is just caused by two wave patterns intersecting entertainment only. What? Yeah, I mean, from... From that perspective, like, you know, I think everyone arguably right now, this last month that I know would be saying they've had a really shit month, that there's been a really tricky energetic going on. It's been full of um, tricky conversation, communication, friction and tension. I think a lot of people have had that experience, so it wouldn't surprise me. So I guess from that perspective, that that's broad, Campbell. You would take it like into your sanctum, your your temple. You know, you you could like be cl- keeping the frequencies of your home at a certain level using, you know, a music and using mm. different things. So you could actually be very much monitoring how you're feeling these days because I agree that they would be absolutely and have forever bombed this reality with frequencies that are not to our service. Well, everything is frequency, yeah. right? Um, and when he, it's interesting when he talks about waves, right? Yeah. Like sound waves and waves in the ocean. Like literally it was two waves meeting, but but not how we, you know, again, we're taught waves are water, right? But waves are frequency. Yeah. Um, but, but the other question is why why would they be doing that? Like, I mean, I guess you could say have they always done well, it? aspect of it. Oh, sorry, we just cut out a bit there. What did you say? The, the, the mind control aspect of it, the shifting. I mean, don't, they've done a massive play here, Campbell. Like, I mean, come on, they've put up all the all the towers, you know, they've got Starlink into every friggin' home. 
They've got devices and smart technology. They've, yeah. you know, uh -uh, those people who took that and put that in, and then it's all in the food. And it's been like a long play here to have all, to have us completely wired and fired biologically to these antennas that mm. like can alter our thought patterns. And it's still not I mean, that's working for them, right? Well, that would be the last thing, wouldn't it? That they actually had controlled our thought patterns. If we're the ones that are breaking this whole thing down um, spontaneously and without much effort, just by putting our focus on not the holding up of their vision, but the collapsing of their vision, then controlling our thoughts would be the only thing you could stop that from happening. Exactly. So the whole fact that they're doing this now shows that something's happening that they're trying to counteract. Okay. And I don't think that they're trying to um, change our thoughts. I think they're trying to make our frequency mm -hmm. agitated and irritated. Yeah, I think I'll, like, I'll because my thoughts are never going to fucking change. There's no way, there's nothing they could do. There's nothing I could eat or do. It. There's no way anyone is going to impact on my thoughts. There's no way I'm cooked, man. I am <laughs> way cooked on that top, on those topics, right? There's no way as zero. And that's the same of everyone I know. There's no way. Um, but, you know, they can they can create the tension and, and miscommunication and agitation and, and, and yucky feelings within me that could emphasise um, a very time-consuming um, process in my, in my own world to do with love relationships friendships um you know the people in my life like work all those things can be pretty fucked with if my yeah. um energies like for sure yeah. and and yeah. ultimately what that's doing is is distracts your you your attention right it does it does so it stops you from creating what you want and and focusing on all this other stuff that just makes it circles again yeah oh, when i'm having when i'm in a situation where i'm fighting with my partner for example there's no I want to sit down and say work on our book you know what I mean like it really exactly. does take a lot of your creative it takes all your creative energy out of the equation and so that's a really excellent tactic they've got going on so you know yes the the whole celebrity collapse right now it has to happen because we've all thought about it way too much yeah and that same with them coming out as transgendered like we've all thought about it way too much literally that's our gossip channel that's our that's our fucking women's <laughs> weekly channel, the, the celebrity <laughs> transgender issue. Um, and the clone stuff. All that's gonna come out because we've all been focusing on it a bit. <clears throat> I wanna, I guess, I guess we could start to work with um how healthy is your frequency band mm. in relationship to how creative are you feeling? Like if you're in a state of creativity and whatever that looks like, because that could be across every skill set, across every skill set. Um, if you're in a state of cre creativity, then your frequency energetic band is looking good. I would say, I would say it's a simple way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, ultimately we're, we're creating all the time, right? Like you're manifesting your destiny anyway, yes. right? But it's, it's that most people are focusing on the wrong thing. So they're okay, so manifesting what they don't want. So it's, Keeping your temple clean, if you want to put it that way, it's, it's but having control. The main thing I think that helps is is understanding that outside is not you. That's that's something different. You don't have to take it in. You don't have to put your your focus outside. You can put it inside and, and yeah. go the other way and actually change. Focus on changing the outside. Don't focus on what is. Like like I said before, it's all potential because nothing is unless we focus on it. It's like um the double seat experiment right it's you get a different result when people are watching it because they're putting their intention into it literally it changes reality this is a proof that, that we actually affect and we create the physical world through our thoughts so if we can start like going oh my god they're doing that again but not take it on board and not be like why are they spraying, spraying the skies again they're trying to kill us you know, you can look at it like, oh, my gosh, they're still trying this stuff and it's still not working. Wow, what, what do I want to create? You know, just like this is the thing, like everyone's like fake news, fake news, but but social media and everything, it, it's all part of the propaganda machine. Apart from well, I Kelly, you know, we're not. But, you know, the, the, most of the stuff that we get and people have sort of shifted to like, well, if it's on YouTube, it's not the news kind of mentality yeah. you know, if it's on social media it's not it's not part of the propaganda but 
it could be. And it's always going to be like that, or at least for the foreseeable future. It's it's up to us to, you know, to um, not be attached to it so much. Well, it's and but you know, it's also accumulative. So if you've got one person, um, you know, dreaming or imagining, I mean, to me, it's about imagination, and it's so. I mean, honestly, Campbell, I I just it, me, I find it even hard these days to get into a state of pure imagination. And like, that's something I prize about myself, but it's getting, I don't know if it's the age or just the age we're in, but like, it's definitely getting harder to step into your imagination. And then plus you've got all these AI like tools now that basically take over from your imagination. It's it's gonna become harder and harder for people to organically access. And I think that would be part of this organized parasitic pyramid that we live in to mm. to remove people from their imagination, which is the most powerful point of creation has to be. But I also think that it's a cumulative. So, you know, you one person, um, but you then you join with two people, then you join with three people, then you join with and like that, that um, manifestation starts to get more and more and more um, uh, accessible and um physical and more and more real and I think that's why of course we've had so much energy from this structure to separate um any sort of you know strong communities buildings that strong community energy that building of that connection Mm. and I mean even in the the Tower of Babel that sort of that sort of concept. It was just all about se- segregating and separating the languages. Yeah, uh, yeah. And even if that was a fable or a myth or real, like it, that notion of separating humanity from each other has been a consistent yeah. tool. Yeah, division Because if you can't speak the same language, you can't share the same dream, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's ultimately why we do what we do, right, is is we're just trying to get a better dream, right, get, get a better th- yeah. thought process out there and start to sort of kickstart something. Um, you know, because ultimately I think yeah. that's it, we're the creators, but but we're always, well, not always, I think it's changing, but, you know, we're so programmed to this left brain structured thing that, you know, the only point of view that we can see is the one that, that we've had, right? And that's pretty much come from the system. So we, yeah. that's what we need to break out. That's maybe why, I don't know, why imagination is is getting harder, but maybe it's just so that we can notice it and we put more effort into it. Because I still ultimately think there's got to be some kind of a split. I don't think that everyone uh, yeah, there has to be. Can, go, can be going to the same place because there's such a difference. Like oh, the same place. Like the system's still, right? Like it's a bit people, creepy. It's a bit weird. I mean, there's a whole NPC aspect, you know, is that true? I don't, but we can't prove that, right? But, you know, it's creepy, Campbell, because, like, every time when we talk about um, this, like, the word ascension, or the, or the like, you know, where, where we go or the, like, the new earth or the frequency shift. Or, it, it, it can appear to be quite creepy because, you know, like imagine if, like, the ascension process is literally your soul being carried to the underground cities or, like, the ascension process being <laughs> that you're, like, your ascension process is actually your descension into the, into the um, you know, the, con- the understanding mm. that we live on top of a massive, insanely developed um advanced civilization under the ground like like what exactly like this ascension thing you know the idea that you'll just be like um all right for example i was was telling you the other day that i was watching a show called chaos on netflix which is a, a parody of um the greek gods ruling today which then set my mind off on this slight split between the gods and all of that mythology and then the Nephilim and all of that mythology and if they're one and the same or if they're separate and different storylines. But in in, in that one, um, the, they were basically sending souls down to the underworld with Hades and that they had built a frame, a main frame, um, but in the underworld and souls were basically going through that frame and they weren't recycling back onto earth for an experience. Their energy was then um, looshed out of them and used to the, that was the drink the gods drank for their <laughs> immortality. Oh, really? Yeah. And like, and I was just like watching it thinking, yeah, I mean, that's concept of humanity's soul essence being loosed. And you saw it again in the dark crystal where they where they extracted the energy from the Gelflings. And like, that's just such a common fucking theme running through so many of our shows that this notion of ascension 
or, um, you know, that there's going to be a shift in, like, it can be a bit creepy because of that con those concepts, right? Mm. Um, yeah, what are we ascending from? Yeah, yeah. And to, and from, mm. from and to. And, you know, to me, like, this whole, like, obviously I watched um, the Mind Unveiled's um, excellent show that they released last week on Undergrounds. Underground that, that on the Spy Kids? I haven't watched it. I saw it pop up. Oh, no, it was just like he, they did it. Me. And look, Mindown Vow's an interesting channel. I've got to say, like, the, the extent of the information and the, the, um, the, the, I just, yeah, they, they're an interesting one. I think that there's some, definitely something helping Mind Unveiled's work. It just feels so sophisticated Deep, and, and yeah. it's so sophisticated. Yeah. And they present such long, um, yeah. sophisticated narratives, you know, yeah. like, yeah. like you and I, we can talk about long, sophisticated theories, but like then to back it up with like all the different languages, breakdowns, all the old books written in different languages. And then all this, like, I just, it feels, yeah. Anyway, point is like, I feel like Mind Unveiled is a part of a, um, maybe a show that's to reveal things and is supported in ways to do that maybe 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 i mean they were talking about concepts years ago mm. years ago they were presenting really detailed theories which is like not even you know common today like mm. <clears throat> and, and, yeah i mean this i was just going to say like there's so much talk about shields and oh my god everyone's a shield and everyone and i, I don't believe that everyone is but i mean ultimately does it really matter? Like if, yeah, if we, I mean, if, yeah, if no, it doesn't. Ourselves, you can watch stuff, and even if yeah. they are controlled, there's still good information in there, right? So oh yeah, yeah, for the sure. The thing that I see a lot about, I just say, guys, just trust yourself. Hey. Watch it anyway. If it if it's crap, turn it off. If you get something from it, awesome. But don't. And it's not like it's not like you have to be. If you're being supported, it's got to be in a negative way. Like you could be, oh. you could be connecting with things that are through your dreams, and they're intuitively sending you. You know, there's a million ways that this information could come to you. And that's the I'm way just the saying, works, right? It, like stuff just that tends to work that way. If you're looking for an answer, it can come from anywhere. It's just that their channel and their concepts are extremely yeah. sophisticated. That's all I'm saying. Sorry. Beyond okay. most channels, I think. Yes, um, beyond our professionalism, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. Um, so basically their last show was on um, underground, the underground civilizations that exist on this realm and oh, all the creatures that have come out of that underground and been reported within the underground, right down, I mean, bizarre stuff, right down to snake beings, giant snake beings, which is where you get all the mythology with um, the snake humans. There's yeah. human cat oh, beings. Goodness. There's worm beings with like people. flattened. Yep. There's like toad people. Mm -hmm. There's like basically all these humanoid slash animal reptiles. But basically there's a lot. Like all of the mythical characters and creatures that we've sort of, you know, see throughout history the map, on the maps or the to the Tartaria critters, um, right through the the stories that we show in our movies and our fantastical creatures that you'd find in Star Wars, for example, um, they're all present in these underground civilizations. And Minor Vale has actually like documented it. Like these these aren't just lofty concepts; these are like documented um, reports and and drawings and etc. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's basically a deeply advanced, highly civilized, um, completely interconnected, multicultural civilization that basically is under our feet and has been there forever. And the idea that we know nothing about it uh, in something like in 1449, somewhere there, um, they put a, a decree across the whole realm that you had to shield, um, they had to seal off every entrance to the underground to the underworld they had to see across the whole realm they had to actually go and seal off every single entrance wow. right to separate the the <laughs> uh, uh, ter terrain dwellers <laughs> the 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 extraterrestrials us yeah. from the inner terrestrials right and it's just like and so and those these gates and and caves and doorways and portals all around the realm from the 14th century well according to their time from the 14th century today has been something that they have systematically blocked off and eradicated and that the majority of what well, all religions 
have come about um, as protectors of certain doorways. Wow. So it like Buddhism in um, Tibet, obviously full of yeah, yeah. doorways yeah, into yeah. The, and the connection with the reptilians. Yeah. Um, then you've got like the Islamic religions, you've got the Hindu religions, you've got, I mean, Christianity, hello, like look what that's turned into as far as, you know, like they, their Christianity is epic when it comes to creating structures and, and, you know, Vatican like places in and over Mm. huge so yeah so basically um that's i mean that you know that's a reconciliation for humanity if we think resting fucking stupid ass enslaved immoral celebrities like mm. if we think arresting them is a big, big deal like imagine if we're talking about being actually exposed to the fact that under our feet campbell is a full-on active more more active than uh, than the than our, than our civilization that's mm. fucking huge that's fucking huge yeah man that's like at fuck that's it's like the universe or the solar system or something but beneath our feet right all these different worlds but it's just there and i mean what are we thinking of they i mean if, if everything's been sealed off that would kind of make me think that what's down there is good right or at least there's some good down there and some something because they've blocked us off from it right and put us in this well, good, system good and bad good and bad bad and good same as us like good and bad mm. you know like there's a lot of these creatures that um feed off us feed off meat feed off flesh um you know like i i, I was looking at it the eyes of the cat you know, I was going through my cat tangent. And just to summarise here, just because we haven't talked about it this show, the reason there's cats behind us is because I couldn't let go of the cat topic. And I'm just going to tell you right now in five minutes everything that I discovered about the cats. One, uh, is that all right? Well, can I just blurt out the cat context? Go for it. In totally no context at all of what we're talking about, but <laughs> here it is. It might make sense. Because cats and dogs, so the cat, the the Bashit and then and Anubis, the dog-headed, the two Egyptian god creatures, which we're pinning as part of the beginning of this whole control grid that we're in, they were prized and famed for leading souls to the underworld. Just that's interesting, interesting side note, that mm -hmm. like cats and dogs were the one that would carry the souls down into the underworld. So mm -hmm. I was then looking at, well, are they a part of the underworld? Why do they have like, a, you know, right access to the underworld, so to speak? That's where you get like the, the, yeah. the, the black cat and the black dog and yeah and there's yeah. the three-headed yeah hell. but yeah. i mean it's interesting because dogs i'm just thinking i mean i'm pretty sure that they just appeared too right just like cats yeah around the egyptian you know? time and yeah they just, we just get this story of oh well you know people just somehow tamed wolves and they they changed the way they look right they turn into hounds or something um which doesn't make a lot of sense no. The only two creatures in the realm that that's ever happened to are dogs and cats. I know. And they're so cute and fluffy now that we just love them in our house. Like they're the only animals, for mm. the most part, people put in their houses. Interestingly enough, the only animal not mentioned in the Bible is the cat. The cat. Now, that's weird. That's curious. Why is that? Why of all animals when there was such reverence at the time of the Bible's creation around cats? Mm. Why would the cat be omitted? Are they trying to hide something? Were, were and then why were cats and dogs um, maintained as gods? Because they were absolutely they were mummified and maintained as gods, like they were put in the realm of gods. That's why they were so worshipped. So in ancient Egypt, where the, which is where the Bible sort of originated, no matter what anyone tells me. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so in ancient Egypt, these two creatures were believed to be the embodiment of gods. They literally had the god souls in them. Yes. They could carry the soul of the gods, yes. which is why they became then known as beings that could carry souls of the dead down to the underground. So they became, for whatever reason, vessels that could maintain godly souls. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. It's weird. I, I did of a all bit the of research and through most cultures that I could find, yeah, cats are related to gods. They, they, they're in temples um the siamese cats they, they they're from obviously siam thailand and they used to guard the buddhist temples and were considered very sacred yeah uh, um in islam um the cat is a quintessential pet yep um, yep i, I mean uh, the cats ritually um 
Well, basically, they're held up like gods, right, and ritual that, creatures. But they're yep. that theme of them being able to carry souls or like other entities being able to inhabit them. I mean, that that story seems to go across all of it. Yep, as- it it is. It's across every religion, and it's so weird because why would you choose to a cat, a little domestic fluffy cat, versus a lion? Like, why would you not take the lion? Like, it makes so much more sense if you're going to revere a feline. Hello. But no, they they created. It feels like they genetically mod- like created the domestic cat and dog in ancient Egypt to infiltrate mm. our homes. Yeah, yeah. Well, cats they often link to the lynx. Interesting, interesting language there, right? Link it to the lynx. Um, which I mean, I guess that that's just the smallest cat that we have that's not domestic. But but when you look at dogs, they say they all come from wolves. So Sherlock, sure, he looks like he's <laughs> a dashund or a bloody yeah. hounds, right? Hounds have a completely different kind of makeup. They have different hair. Um, I can't see, you know, some of the dogs, sure, but what, what were they crossbreeding it with to get these different breeds if there's only wolves? Yep. You know, and cats yep. as well, because lynxes, they have different ears. They have, you know, they're bigger. They are a different animal. So, again, what were they crossbreeding them with to make them smaller and, and less exactly. feral? Exactly. It's, right? it's mm. significant. It's significant because, like, they you kind of, you got to look at what's obvious. And what's obvious about ancient Egypt is the pyramids, the pharaohs, and the cat and the dog, like, as gods. This is, this is what's obvious for ancient Egypt, right? And that there was some connection to the tech from Atlantis to the days of the – and that the pharaohs were fucking not human. Like, they're weird, gangly, giant – so then we've got the pharaohs being giant and the Nephilim being giant. We've got the pharaohs being white-skinned and pale and the Nephilim being white-skinned and pale. We've got the pharaohs with their strange headgear on, a mask in the shape of animals. we got the, 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 the Nephilim, you know, with their clown faces and their cannibalistic mouths. You know, you've got, Sorry, you've got the cone. Sorry, it's just kind of that, that parade in, is it Sweden for Christmas where they all dress up as like beasties? Yeah. And they'll put like these big headdresses on right the, yep yeah. yep i mean the nephilim are clowns are a really excellent series you guys should check that out it's really good um but it basically proves the case through all of um tribal history and mythology and uh, the 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 demons the god the gods are represented as clowns and today clowns emulate the gods by still um, you know, exaggerating their giganticness with their huge feet and their huge hands and their little hats and their little cars and these bloody mouths, which are the representation of cannibalism and blood. And their slits, the clowns will plate slits makeup, mm-hmm. but the slits in the eyes are the repti- is the slit mm-hmm. in the eyes, which weirdly enough, cats also have with the snake. Snakes and cats have the slit in the eyes and the clowns also. So there is a link here, mm-hmm. right? So, like, so we've got these two creatures um, revered as gods. In ancient Egypt, they mummified cats. So I think we've talked about that on the show. They literally mummify cats. Well, what the fuck? Why would you do that? Like, you literally. But then Tripoli in the 1800s, they sent hundreds of thousands of mummified cats back to the UK and America to be used as fertilizer. Yeah, and when they say that to me, Campbell, you know what I think about? I think about McDonald's and <laughs> all the stories about the humans that end up as uh, McDonald's hamburgers. Yeah, like, okay. I mean, I mean cats, but what were they doing with it? All? Like, I mean, definitely not fertilizers. It sounds a bit of a shit story, doesn't it? Right? <laughs> Hello, there's no organic matter left in a mummified cat that's meant to be like fucking four or five thousand years old. Mm. What? What's mm. left in there is probably a time capsule of parasites and maybe God beings if the go- if the cats carry the souls of gods. So what's I wonder what did you check out the, the time dates of when they went to England and when that what's that stuff called? V- oh, the real Bob society. Real. No, I didn't. Above real. Oh, Campbell. Well, yeah. oh, that would Bob be real. a fucking fantastic <laughs> link. Well, let's just I know when the it was reported, it was like um it was reported 1888. 1888 oh, was when they started sending mummified cats. That's pretty close. Back to, the to Bovril, isn't it? 
Yeah, so you guys remember we were talking about the Real Society in the last show and that from this Real Society came an actual physical food product called Bovril and that like be gave to every single soldier. It was at every shelf in, in the UK and America. Like it was big, like Vegemite. Now that's an interesting thing. Were they putting the fucking, the cats, the mummified cats into the creation of the book? That wouldn't surprise me. That would make sense to me. And the other thing about the cat, which is really important to understand, is that the cat actually ha holds like the parasite that is the one parasite that one in three humans now have in their brains. And yeah. that parasite can influence your sexual nature. It can influence your thoughts and thinking. It can influence the sort of partnerships you attract. It influences relationships. Like it's fucking big, right? And one in three of us have it and it's only brought to the household via cats. Toxoplasmosis, yeah, man. That That's what got us on this whole, whole journey, right, is the cats carry this one parasite that's that's everywhere and and yeah man it can control your mind your thoughts your actions all this and what have we seen in the last couple of years right like people who don't be they don't seem to be able to control their thoughts and their their that's actions right. and the whole you know sex thing you know this whole bloody everyone's doing only fans and all this kind of weirdness that's coming up it's crazy yep it's crazy. And then you've got a link, obviously, the the whole weird phenomenon that kids are wanting to, like, be, be cats and dogs. So, like, this whole thing about putting kiddies into classrooms and literally that's a thing and that's happening. So yeah. that's a really weird chain of circumstances around the cat. It is, yeah, yeah. And I think you made the link a few videos back that, you know, a lot of the, the children that are, you know, claiming to be cats or dogs, their parents are supporting them. Oh. And like literally to the point where they're, they're going up and trying to sue schools and all this kind yeah. of stuff. And so, vets, sue the vet. So, yeah, and would it not make sense that a mother and child would, would be, you know, have the same parasites, right? Is that what we're seeing here, that it's, it's yeah. a parasitic mind? So, all right, let me cross the, cross the theory then. What if you've got, if you blend the toxoplasma, is it toxoplasma? Is that toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis with the uh, uh, uh. What if you blend those two together and like the toxoplasmosis is actually initiated or it's it's the 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 link that parasites the link to the uh, 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 or what was ever what that nano nano yeah technology tech that, that was bots, yeah you know like that's a long plan give one in th one in three humans this parasite and then we can from there with this we can manipulate what they think who they are that would make total sense to me and also those numbers feel right the one in the, the the third the third of the population mm. i don't think it's half of the population i think it's probably a third well this is the other thing like <laughs> they, they control the media so all this stuff that we get about you know no you know most people aren't awake you know look they're all crazy but that's just that's just propaganda through the media yeah. i think there's so many more people awake than than what they're trying to let yeah. us know right okay. think, but it's the same story that's what they always do like don't you know fake news man all right so just on this note and we should have put this right at the beginning of the podcast so i will ask you to cut this out and <laughs> put it at the beginning as well not to cut it out but just to repeat it on that note of parasites affecting the brain and um the the need for an idea to get more powerful if it's in the se in the space of community Campbell and I are launching and hosting an 8 day water fast um off the back of our fast to give you guys a chance to fast in a way that's supportive and you're not doing it by yourself so it's happening in October the link is underneath here just click through um it's it's there's no cost it's by donation um, just pay whatever you feel it's worth. Campbell and I are committing to turning up um, in the morning and in the evening for every for eight days where we will launch a Zoom, have a Zoom podcast with anyone who wants to come on. And if you've got any fears or stresses or worries or something weird's happening or you're losing your motivation or whatever it is, we'll be there as a community to be like, we can do this team. Day one is done. Everyone go to sleep quickly and it'll be day two, you know, like, you know, you know just sleep, sleep your whole way. <laughs> you, you know, go to bed if you're feeling like you're giving up and go to bed and sleep and it'll be day three, you know, like, but we'll be there to hold your hand and to like, you know, get you through it.
Yeah, man. Yeah. And thanks to everyone who's already gone and signed up. Um, yeah. We've got quite a few there um, and we haven't even really promoted it. So that's awesome. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it, it would be a hard go, I think, doing it by yourself, you know, especially, you know, if you're in a, a you know, in the, in the burbs or something like that, where you've got yep. other people in your space. So yep. you know, if you want to do it, then this is, this will, you know, we believe will be a, a big help, you know, every morning, you know, every evening, get motivation, get to talk to other people. You know, you can have a, a bitch about how, how mm-hmm. it sucks. Um, but just that support, like, will, will help, you know, immensely, I think, to get through, get people through. And what are we 100%. doing about eight days? Is that we're going eight to days. Yeah. So yeah. That- yeah, because then you, just, you can say you did a week, you did over more than a week. And I think it takes to day three to, um, you know, calm your system down into the process and find your momentum. I think it takes a day five to bring up any things, issues that are going to happen. So by day eight, you should, and of course, you don't have to end there. If you've got the momentum and you're going, and we, and we, and if the community has momentum past eight days, then Campbell and I will continue with you. We will go to the end with you guys because like to us as a community like freeing you of parasitic influences is fucking excellent and i think it's like what we need to do moving forward as a group as a gang as a little gang we're going to be fucking toxoplasmosis free we're going to be cat um and dog um influences free you know we're going to be free of this like whatever's causing anything within our systems but mainly You're going to get to have the experience, which which means your knowledge turns into wisdom and your wisdom becomes your sovereignty. And from that point, you have a new superpower. Definitely. And, and, you know, the whole, the health benefits, right? Anything that that's in you and and shouldn't be there. um, Well, you, with eight days, you'll get rid of most of it. You know, you'll be in ketosis for what, five, six days or something. And that's where your body goes through and it eats up all the crap that shouldn't be there. So you know, it's health benefits too, right? Like we did 19 days. So we're, we're cancer free, man. We can't get, we can't get any of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, it's really um, powerful for everyone to have an experience with water fasting and have an experience with parasite cleansing. So, you know, um, if you guys are interested in doing that, like just remember, just remember if you are arming and ahhing and hesitating that you literally get to eat food every single day of your life, as much as you like, as many times as you like, you literally get to do that for the rest of your life till you die. You being supported to not eat food and drink water and give your body a break. That's more, that is extremely rare comparatively to how much you can eat. So, so if you are umming and ahhing about it, just think, can I sacrifice a week of my habits around food to try something completely unknown to my system? The reason it's called a water fast is because once you embody something like a fast, you your whole um, reality speeds up. You literally go through a quickening yourself on all levels because You've done something completely un, uh, spontaneous and unknown yep. um, and unpredictable and broken a few habits there that your system's never done before. All of that generates a really good positive shift in it reality. Does, so it does, man. I mean, look at us. We're, we, we were doing it back on the farm, and now what? A month later or something. I'm in Perth. Yep. You're, you're in Malaysia. Oh, it's fucking like, insane. Everything's changed. It's crazy. Yeah. Yep. Um, but also, like, I was pretty. You know, I was a bit worried going into the fast, and I was thinking, "Oh my God, I'll try and get to five days. If I can do five, I'll be happy." And I did nineteen, guys. It was so much easier than I thought. It really yeah. was. Yeah. And and that was, you know, because we created the space, we had, you know, each other to support each other, and and so yeah, if you're worried about it, just go for it. Like I, to me, like I said, it was it was it was so much easier. I was quite worried, and I had no. I did two weeks without even really thinking about it so yeah so it's not a big bad thing it's just a different experience and it'll clean your head out it'll it'll you know push your your manifestation and changing your life forward and it'll clean you out right and and get rid of any any dis-ease that's in your body yeah absolutely and if you're feeling stuck in your reality for any other reason which i think we all secretly are and i think it's inevitable right now um this is a sticky time then, you know, this is a great thing to do. It'll it'll unstick you a little bit. So, look, um, Cam and I are running this in October. The information is below. Go onto the website. Um, you can just register and, you know, you can just sign up and register and then get scared or just, like, come on the first day and, 
just like you know find the cur the courage you can like go for as long as you like or pull out whenever you like so like, there's no restrictions here this is a self-motivated process that you'll be in it's just that we're going to stand there with the community and fucking get you through to the longest possible thing I don't think this have, I don't know, community water fastings. I don't know if that's been done on um via a YouTube YouTube Truth community channel before, but mm -hmm. here we are. Mm -hmm. And um and if it works, we'll keep doing it because Cam and I are going to keep doing them and we're going to keep parasite cleansing. And you know, I just think this is just a, a good a good tool in our mm -hmm. in our oh, well, stay in a good Zen vibe mm -hmm. energy for. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, so that's our info commercial. Because we've we've just done a huge one, but next next time we hold this, we'll be we'll be fasting with you. Yeah, I mean, I might decide to do it. I'm not sure. I mean, we obviously Cam and I have just completed you know, one, so I might do a few days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I just think they're good things, and I just yeah. Anyway, whatever happens, we'll be turning up to guide everyone. Yeah, we will. So, I think I put it. I lost. Hmm. I lost weight, and now I think I put it back on. So maybe I'll do it. So um yeah so look we we would love to see a thousand people on that water fast but if we get like a hundred people that's fantastic the more there are the more momentum you guys are going to feel the more energy you will build around it you know most likely everyone will go a bit longer than the eight days all right so that's the info commercial so we're really looking forward to um connecting with you guys on that topic so back to cats Campbell because I wasn't finished there <laughs> I just got sidetracked. I wanted to read a few things, all right? So let uh, me just share the screen um, because... I need to run to the toilet quickly. So okay, you run to the toilet. Me. I'll be back. Bet, all right, let's see how quickly he can wee. He's good at it after the water fast. He's a wee machine, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so I just put into cats from are from underground civilizations. Random, right? And this is what it came up with. There's so many things that it came up with. And first of all, why are cats not mentioned in the Bible? I mean, I that's a really interesting. What are they hiding? Did cats create the Bible? You know what I mean? Like, why are they omitted from the Bible? So in Islamic law, all right, um, unlike many other animals such as dogs, Islamic law considers cats ritually pure and that cats possess blessings and allow cats to freely enter homes and even mosques. Cats are believed to be the most common pet in Muslim countries. That's interesting, don't you think? That these little vehicles and vessels, they're also cute and cuddly now, are allowed to go into our most sacred places. Why is this? Are cats God creatures? Um, cats were not worshipped as gods themselves, but as vessels that the gods chose to inhabit and whose like likeness gods chose to adopt. What is that? <clears throat> I just think that's so interesting as vessels, but as vessels that the gods choose to inhabit. I just keep that in mind. In Chinese mythology, the gods initially put cats in charge of the world. After that, I mean, Campbell has to hear this. After that, they created it. And Li Shu was the leader of the cats. What? Did you guys even know this? Like, why would cats be considered to be in charge of the fucking world? Like, this is bizarre. The gods gave cats the ability to talk so they could better rule the other creatures. Campbell, glad you're back. You're missing some very inf important information here. Okay. All right, so I have to repeat it. Sorry, everyone, but this is good for everyone to hear. So in Islamic law, cats are considered ritually pure and that cats possess blessings, which means the cats are the only animals that are allowed to freely access the homes and the mosques, all their sacred places. Mm. So keep, bear in mind, cats have been given the right of passage to go everywhere but no other animal all right get okay so get this cats were not worshipped as gods themselves but as vessels that the gods chose to inhabit and whose likeness gods chose to adopt what Interesting. vessels all right this is a good one though this is chinese in chinese mythology the gods initially put cats in charge of the world <laughs> after they created it and lee show was the leader of the cat the gods gave cats the ability to talk so that they could better rule the other creatures. But mm. the cats had other ideas. They lazed about and said whatever. But the cats were initially put in charge of the world. Interesting. I'm just saying. Yeah, you, man. You, we've just never thought of cats in this fucking way, right? Mm. I'm just, I just went through and looked at all the different. All right. So in Egypt, you would put to death if you killed a cat. Wow. What? Even if it was an accident. Wow. You were put to death. 
Why? You can't kill a vessel of the gods, man. Cats are the guardians of the underworld. Underworld. <laughs> they say in Hinduism, all life this means a cat is still what someone have said. No, 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 no. Why it's sin to kill a cat? Because oh, so it was a sin to kill a cat, but not for. We'll have a look at that one more. All right. So the cat isn't mentioned in the Bible. Just keep that in mind. It's just fucking weird. It is a bit weird. Um. Oh yeah, so prophets of Mo, Prophet Muhammad from the Muslim religion was extremely fond of cats. He was he regarded the felines as the highest form of animal. Interesting. Yeah. Now he's yep. I was going to say, have you still got that page up on the people that? Yes, were, yes, that yes. Beautiful. I'm getting to that. Japanese myths, depending on the story, cats that were brutally killed by humans have become. Cat ghosts, I'm assuming, and curse the human. Wow. Um, and then, like, this is in okay, what's this one? Zeus' wife, her imaginary servant into a black cat as punishment over some godly drama. Oh, so again, it was a, a god being put into a cat's body, huh? That's what that just said. Now, um, okay, so what then became very interesting and strange, and if I've got it here which most people won't know, is this here. So Julian Caesar. Yeah. Ah, here. All right, check this out, everyone. I mean, this is just another friggin' weird thing. Yeah, Capo. Ru ruthless conquerors, Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Napoleon and Hitler, and even Genghis Khan have said to be scared to death of cats. Phobias sometimes seem far-fetched, even comical. It's called, can you pronounce that? Um, it, phobia, um, europhobia, is that it? A pathological fear of cats. What? Why? Why would they have a pathological fear of cats? Like, what are you talking about? So it's, all of these big, crazy, tyrantial world leaders, potentially um, human, human leaders, had a terrifying energy, pathological, terrifying mm. fear of cats. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? Because the cats had gods in them? This is the thing, like, like were they, were these people going against the system? Because obviously with the H-man from Germany, there's a lot of conjecture of what he was doing. Uh, Napoleon, what he did led to the, the beheadings, even though that got, you know, subverted. So, yeah, I mean, that's an interesting little little side tangent. Were they going against the gods and that's why they were scared of them? Because yes. Cats, right? I mean, have you guys ever heard of a fear of cats? Like, that? that's a not a known phobia no, today. Maybe a lion or a tiger, but not, not a hat, domestic cat. And I just had a thought, too, is isn't it interesting that a domestic cat, it doesn't roar, it meows and it hisses, and the same hisses. with a dog. Like what we're told of are the wild dogs, like wolves and things, they howl, they don't bark. So that's another interesting point, right? It's very interesting point. Very interesting. I mean, look, there's another reference here. So Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Genghis Khan, Napoleon, Mussolini and Hitler, all afraid of cats, terrified of cats. That's crazy. So um, I don't know, guys, like, I mean a cat tangent right now because mm -hmm. every time I, I go into it even further, something even trippier comes up. Uh, I just thought this quote was interesting. I've lived with several mm -hmm. Zen masters. All of them are cats. I hate Eckhart Tolle. I'm not into I think he's fucking bullshit. Um, but yeah, I uh, he's, agree, man. he's fucking no good. Um, he's, and boys, like, man. he's like that. He's like that evil German dude from... Um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, the way he talks. Yeah. <laughs> he's like Bashir. He's just he's just basically it's yeah. it's he's the same ilk as um the Dalai Lama, Oprah, Winfrey. It's just all the same shit to me. Well, actually, he one. was really good friends, wasn't he, with Oprah? Yep. He Deepak was, Chopra. He helped promote him up and, and get him big. It's all the personal oh, development like, movement. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Personally. Um okay, I just thought that was an interesting quote, but this whole video here. This was all talking about cats as vampires. Now, which is really interesting because I personally haven't ever made that conclusion. I've never drawn that connection to cats being vampires. Mm -hmm. I just simply, um, I, you know, you, you think of bats and vampires. 
I don't think of cats and vampires. You think of werewolves and dogs, but cats and anyway, this goes on in such a fascinating story around the vampire cats and how like they've gone on. Basically, it's replicating what we've just talked about about the dead and the souls and how cats would, you know, that where all the superstition would come from with cats and how the cats would like cross over people's grave and, and take the soul or that like they could cross over a grave and reanimate the soul and, and turn them into zombies or that you wouldn't want to die if there was a cat in the room because it would take your soul. Like, and when we talk about all this soul loose drawing, the soul stealing, the the fake recycling of the human soul, like all of that's a bit scary in relationship to this context of cats. It, it, it links into a lot of the stuff, doesn't it? You know, the carriers of people to the underworld, you know, and all this walking across graves, and it's it's very like they're vessels, right, for other, yeah. <laughs> other, other souls or entities. It's, yeah, I've um, never heard of cats as, as vampires, but, I mean, cats and bats, it's pretty close, right? Yeah, I mean, it's very interesting. I mean, I'd love to, I mean, it's six minutes long to be played or is that too crazy? Yeah, well, I think it's, 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 let's play it and then then, then we can yeah, finish up. Yeah, I, I just think, I think it's worth, look, and by the way, everyone, just so you know, just so you fucking know, Campbell and I don't hate cats. We're <laughs> hating for some massive mutiny against cats or to like look at your cat suspiciously and start to not love it as much. I mean, I've had a 20, I've had a cat for 20 years. Mm. I'm down with cat. Mm. Like all I'm it's saying. Called Pollyanna for like Polly. 22 years. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of information about how cats protect you in on all of the, and you know, there's a lot, there's a, there's a flip side to this, but I'm just thinking in regards to what we're talking about, it's fucking trippy that cats play such a dominant role and they're revered as vessels that carry gods and that the mm. Bible hasn't, has omitted. And um, all these people, these world leaders that were like most terrifying world leaders that change the course of our history, like we're terrified of them. There's all very, mm. and the, the toxoplasmic. And, and like, we don't know, right? We're just doing research. It could be that that's just what they are, right? They, they can carry, very, you know, they can be vessels for other souls, but it doesn't mean they're all bad. You know, they could they, be manipulated they, like we have been. Who knows? We don't they've know. They've been, yeah, we don't know. They've been, but yeah. they they do carry the one parasite that actually that's influences right. the human brain more than anything. That's the right. fucking truth. And, you know, kids want to be cats and dogs these days, which is fucking weird. So all of that stuff is happening and that's why we're here. But, you know, don't hate and reject your your pussy cat because of this. Like you We're know, not anti cat. We like cats. Yeah, we yeah, we them. love cats. All right, yeah. let's just watch this for a little bit, just for fun, just to see how like we feel about cats and vampires. If it gets boring, I'll turn it off. Should I put it on to double speed? Do we want it on? Yeah, quick yeah, speed? yeah, let's do that. Right, I'll speed it up. Stop us getting banned. Because we can handle that shit. We can do it. I'll go down to one seventy five. All right, you ready, team? Let's go. It's mine. Dracula Thank and race. Wait, stop. When you think of vampires, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Dracula and Rice, the characters from Twilight. All right, is that too quick for Maybe you? Help on help from Sesame Street. Oh, so yeah, often these nocturnal blood sucking ghouls are shapeshifters. Right. Come, we're going to <laughs> However, vampires have also been linked to another animal, one you may have in your home right now, curled up on your very lap. The thing is, throughout history, cats have also been cast as the main character in many that's vampire true. tales and legends. Maybe that's part of the reason people thought they were the devil incarnate. But why are furry feline friends associated with bloodthirsty immortal beings? Well, there's a lot, and it's all very, very cool. But to start things off on a positive note, <laughs> Egyptian lore revered cats and portrayed them as guardians of the underworld. They would often bury their dead with them in some form. The tie-in with potential godlike immortality, death, and the underworld might explain how cats became entwined with vampires for some. <laughs> Flashing forward to an English belief that cats steal the breath from newborns. This belief was further perpetuated after a cat was actually accused and ultimately convicted of infanticide in 1791. While this baby's death most likely happened as a result of the cat seeking milk from the child's mouth, it only adds to the mythology linking cats to vampires and death. There are some pretty interesting legends that give cats the power to turn a corpse into a vampire. But how is such a feat accomplished? Well, these vampire-inducing cats appear back in Greek folktales where it's said that they have the ability to to turn corpses into vampires by leaping over unburied bodies and by crossing fresh graves. Interestingly enough, this carried through even into the Victorian era, where fires were not to be lit when showing the departed loved one's body in the home prior to burial. The thought being, a warm hearth would attract the house cat, who could then leap over the body slash coffin and turn the dead into a vampire or steal their soul. These perceptions persisted into Scottish folklore, where in order to keep roaming cats at bay, they placed catnip out away from the burial sites. I mean, that's one way of distracting cats. Because of these tales, 
Fires near corpses were forbidden in order to deter such a cat from snuggling near the warmth and presumably stealing the soul of the dead. Other European folklore depicts cats as fairies that steal souls. Fairies. For example, the Scottish cat she, which is a hybrid of Gaelic words for cats and fairies, supposedly roamed the highlands looking for souls to claim, as you do. Another interpretation says the cat she was a witch who had the ability to transform from human to cat form a total of nine times, which uh, sounds super familiar. Many hypothesize that this tale forms the origin of the superstition that cats have nine lives. Meanwhile, Romanian lore proposed that when a cat, particularly a black cat crossed paths with a pregnant woman vampirism could result this chance encounter i mean come on this is weird it is right? Weird, right i mean and the nine lives is an interesting point what do we say they have nine lives when they say it's a witch thing but is that because they can carry nine lives <laughs> who knows would lead the unborn child to becoming a vampire. So it appears that many, many people over the centuries have believed that cats were vampire makers. But in pop culture today, it's safe to say that the vampire is assumed to transfigure into a bat when they need to get some air or travel. However, there is a bit of lore that actually centers on vampires turning into cats, and I'm here for it. This belief in the shape-shifting ability of vampires is literally the stuff of numerous legends. Most variations describe a black cat assuming the shape of a beautiful female to lure her paramour, with the intent to drink his blood. For example, mm -hmm. Japan's vampire cat of Nambashima depicts how a mischievous cat cat attacked the princess paramour, a rare beauty, and basically took over her position. The unknowing prince was then doing <laughs> Took over her position. They literally took over her position. A cat. And eventually fell gravely ill as a result. A, a cat woman. A brave samurai vowed to forego sleep and stand guard over the prince. This incredible loyalty thwarted the attempts of the mischief. Look at those eyes. The black cats are cool, man. Whoa, what just happened then? Am I off this? What just happened? Hang on a minute. Sorry, I just did Any something cool, weird. Cookies. What did I just do then? Oh, I was enjoying that. See, it's fascinating shit, isn't it? Oh, I just turned yeah. Safari on accidentally. Don't know why I did that. Have bear with me. Crazy. All right. Oh, hang on. I've got a screen share again. All right, everyone. <clears throat> All right. Go. Here we go. I'm so, I'm so excited now. You see? Mischievous cat to claim the prince's soul. Naturally, of course, her ill intentions were uncovered and she was banished to the mountains. Across England, accused witches were also blamed for turning into cat form at night to seek out infants in order to drink their blood. Cats were what? frequently the companions of witches, their familiars, and many assumed they drank blood from the bodies of their owners via witches' tits, which were really likely just any interesting birthmarks or scars. <laughs> but of course, the bodies of the suspected witches were examined for wounds that could corroborate the accusations. These assumptions only further solidified the idea that cats had vampiric tendencies as they needed to feed on blood to be sustained and in service to their witch. Now, as far-fetched as a lot of this all sounds, here's the thing. There are real-life connections between vampires and cats, and this connection is thanks to the work of ecologist Holly Gans. Her fieldwork focuses and follows black-footed cats in South Africa. She says, these small cats are quite fierce and have lovely fangs and bright green eyes that shine yellow in the spotlights. Like vampires, they are predators who drink blood and go underground during the day. Her observations note that this population not only drinks blood but also has a nocturnal lifestyle. They get very cranky in the sun. Two very on-point and unique characteristics that only further feed into the cat vampire myth. And this kind of goes beyond the obvious. Well, all cats, especially big cats like lions and tigers, etc., are carnivorous, so of course they eat flesh and blood. It doesn't mean they're vampires. Take, because these cats look like smaller common domestic cats, and they drink blood, which is rather more what the vampire cat lore seems like it's referring to. Another study, published in Applied Animal Behavior Science, examined cats in Latin America and focused on the use of cats to ward off bats from preying upon livestock. So, bats versus cats? Vampire battle extraordinaire? These predatory vampire bats were effectively... Uh, so basically cats will um, override the bat and also the snake, just so you know. Oh, yeah, they do beat snakes. Yep, yep. They are one of the, like, they are apex predator. They're the apex oh, predator. They, they totally, totally, they're the yep. top, man. Dissuaded from attacking the poor livestock by the presence and menace of nearby cats. Ferocious. So what does all this mythology tell us? Well, while cats are both loved and, in my opinion, perfect and unfairly slandered, you never know if they'll grant you a very long undeath by turning you into a vampire too, which could be your thing, I don't know. But thank you, friends and beans, for tuning in to All right, look, that's fucking interesting, don't you think? Yeah, man, like, there's all these weird connections, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How do they drink blood? Like, that's, that's weird. And isn't it weird that, like, um, our mythology on cats is pretty unknown? Like we don't get we we don't see cats come up in much truth seeking channels. Like cats are never featured as anything actually, and like all different realms have mythology around cats, and they're all the same mythology about vampires and and death and souls and underground and all this stuff. And 
But like we as a culture don't really talk about any cat mythology. It's just like it's been omitted. It's been like protected. It's been like mm. erased over. Like of all the things, have you ever watched a truth channel like deep dive on the cat? No, no, no. I mean, all we get is, you know, witches have black cats. Yeah. That's what, what, what are they not supposed to do? Walk under ladders or something? And they're like cats, don't let them cross your path. Because we love the cat, because the cat's in our home, because we've got mm. the domestic cat and the domestic dog, both of them just appeared out of ancient Egypt, both of them associated with dead. Um, And then, like, there they are, they're in our homes. So, anyway, that's all. Very that's all i just like to offer. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got any more information <laughs> on cats, guys, and what they are and their, their weird ways, and leave us a comment. Um, yeah, so there you go. I think we're done, are we? Oh, ah, yes, I could ramble on, but I do have to go to work. It's true. Yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> all right. So, I mean, I know we started on celebrities, and it appears to have no influence or connection to cats. Well, who was the dude? But who knows? The dude who broke most of this stuff, Cat Williams. Oh, get fucked. <laughs> He's right. He's right. It's true. That's hilarious. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, You're connection. quite right. Yeah. Look, I mean, and you know what? They do wear cat feline outfits as celebrities a lot. The mm. cat, the cat in the whole it's feline whole mind control fucking is big. Thing as well, all that, you know, kind of side of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And like cats and dogs do feature highly in outfits in the SM and more perverted oh, um yeah. sex scene. Yeah, it'd be it'd be ninety percent more at cats and dogs, right? Would, yeah. yeah. And I think that whole like you know like the gimp look that whole like black like yeah, everyone's that's very Anubis that style, yeah. Well, I guess when you put it next to Catwoman from Batman, yep. I think I'm thinking yep. of Michelle Pfeiffer's. Yep, looks very that, gimpish, doesn't it? Yeah, gimpish yeah. and latexy. That's all very. And mm. it's interesting that cats and dogs are quite black. And actually, I watched, I looked at some atomological um, people trying to convince me that cats have um, evolved naturally. But when you look at their, the cats that were likened to them, which weren't cats back then, but some other division of it, gosh, they look like snakes. <clears throat> like snakes. They just had the same snaky, like the cat face, the cat head was morphed way more like a snake. And the colour of their um, fur was way more like scales and the shape of their neck was longer and their tail was like twice the size. So it was like they looked mm -hmm. like elongated snakes, like they'd been crossed with snakes. That's what it looked like, that they'd been crossed wow. with a snake, which is what I think cats may have may have happened. And I think, I think like could cats be the Trojan horse? Yeah. Could cats be the Trojan the control grid? Stuff. Yeah, 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 I know, right? We have that story. Is cats the organic control grid? We don't know. But, like, damn, they're everywhere. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, this is the thing. They could be some kind of, you know, mythical protector creature, but they've also they've just been subverted and used against us, right, like everything else in this realm. Or they could be Satan himself. We don't know. Imagine if imagine if um a human that relates to being a cat actually rose to become the president. Imagine that. I mean it's not hard to imagine, is it? Like one furry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like I mean it's not hard to imagine at all. Not in that, this like, one, way, geez, another four years and that could be a reality. Like look at the way we're yeah. going. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. Well, look, that's just the, an interesting thing. What I was taught about um, how to use my psychic abilities, what I was taught to do was look at what's obvious to me, what's obvious. And one of those things that's most obvious is that cats and dogs are a major feature in our reality. They're protected and they, and particularly cats, so particularly cats basically are everywhere mm. and allowed to be everywhere. I would, I bet you there's cats in the Vatican library. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt i mean yeah even even wizards and stuff like yeah all the scenes where you see like a wizard in his library type thing there's always a cat yeah always a cat there's always all, a all cat the, the evil villains have their little yep, cats, their cats you know? overseeing cats always being overseeing what's going on at the highest levels 
That's yeah. Interesting, yeah, I think we should um, talk more about it. Although you may be sick of like going on the cat tangent, but yes. I'm still I just find it very interesting. <clears throat> yeah, man. Well, there's nothing else out there about cats, so let us know. Should we do another one? Should we go <laughs> down? We can have a look at these prehistoric snake cat things and other bits, or or leave us comments if there's any other tidbits we should look into. Yep. And maybe yep. we'll do a part. Well, oh, gosh, what's that going to be? Three or four? I don't know. Yep. <laughs> It's a catastrophe, I tell you. <clears throat> All right, guys. So fantastic. Um, we look forward to welcoming you on our community water fast. Um, go That's and check it out. I haven't put much information up there, just enough to get you registered. And we'll be starting that very couple of weeks from now. So um woohoo. Join up. Um yep. Yep, give your body a reset. And we will be back next uh, Friday this coming Friday in a week. We are sorry, we haven't even mentioned it. We didn't get here last week, but we had a few issues. Kelly was moving. Sherlock yeah. Holmes got bitten by a tick and almost died. Um, mm. And I was I was clearly busy for some reason. But, yes, that's why we weren't here. But we um, we will be next Friday and every Friday from there. They're going oh. forward to the, to the stadium event. <laughs> every time we say we'll always do it, it's like yes. never say never. And if you I'll do enjoy gonna... it, oh, gee, there's the pink blue house. Uh, there's yeah, Mr. Just Sherlock. Sherlock. He's alive. Sherlock. Hey, buddy. <laughs> he's alive, mate. Hello. Oh, mate. Hello. I'm going to talk to him. Oh, I love you. Because really then he goes looking for me. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, this is the look. This is the new view. It's pretty good. Oh, you're at the back. Nice. Um, I'm at the back in the outside office. Big pond. So much very different. Um, But lovely. <laughs> it's, lovely it's a view. very different outlook, man. Like yeah, it's a very different right? outlook. I've got to take you for a little walk. So, I mean, we've got farmland opposite us, which is just excellent. I mean, it's a super lovely location. It's oh, very amazing. Right. Um, it's it's such a good location. What is it? Four minutes out of town, but it's literally you, it's yeah. way out in the country. Yeah. It's pretty rad. Pretty happy with it. It's a nice shift. It is. From um, the bush. Yeah, man. <laughs> From the dry, And it's very vibrant. <laughs> dry, desolate bush. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, but it's it's very vibrant. They've painted it very vibrantly, which is fine, which is good. Mm. Oh, oh, hello. Totally you different. Come up energy, so high. Hey, buddy. Hi. <laughs> oh, he's like, you, you went for a walk. Woohoo, don't forget it. Don't you forget about me. All right, anyway. Anyway. This is why we don't talk about dogs and cats because we love them so much. We can't even imagine this being part of a diabolical plan. No, no, but we are here to ask questions. So let us know, but don't yell at us for being animals because <laughs> we're not. We're not. We're we not. love them. We love we're them. big animal lovers. Yeah. All right. Well, we love you guys and we'll see you soon. All right. See you next week. Ontario, Australia. Mm, stay <laughs> awesome. Links below. Fasting. <laughs> Bye.